Hello and welcome to this webinar. Uh, we are currently waiting for all of the participants to connect, so please allow us a few minutes before we, we start the presentations. Please allow us one or two more minutes while everyone connects. Uh, we are already have 19 participants at this stage. Okay, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, we're going to start. Um, first, please let me address a few practical considerations for, for this webinar. Uh, the first thing to know is that your microphone is currently off, so we cannot hear you if you try to speak to us. Uh, but there is a chat in the, on the right-hand side of your screen where you can uh, react to what is being said uh, during the webinar or you can share your thoughts uh, with, with other participants. Everyone will, will see the same, the same chat. Um, you can also ask questions in the questions tab on, on the right side of your screen. Um, during each presentation, we will address these questions and the, and the presenters will, will try, try their best to, to answer your questions. Um, you can also vote for any questions you find particularly interesting so that these questions are addressed first. This is, uh, still in the, in the questions tab. Um, at several points during the, the, the presentation, we will publish some polls and we will ask you to, to participate and to give uh, your opinion or to, to try and, and find the right answer to, to, the, to the questions we, we will publish. Um, this will be in the, in the polls tab. Um, please know also that this webinar is being recorded and that uh, it will be made available for you to replay uh, after the end of, of, the, of the presentation. 
And you can also, uh, if you wish, uh, download the presentation presentation that is being showed uh, on screen um, by clicking on the gear at the top right hand corner of the presentation screen. If you want to, to for example, to keep this uh, this presentation for for um, further reference. And now that we've taken care of these practical aspects, uh, we can move on to, to the more important matters. Um, first of all, I would like to thank you all for joining this webinar. Uh, we appreciate your interest in the Access to Finance program for small water and electricity providers, which is uh, what we will be discussing today. Uh, I hope you will find this webinar interesting and that it will lead to a potential partnership with your institution uh, in the future. Uh, for those of you who are not yet familiar with uh, the AFD or Proparco, I'm going to give you a short introduction to our institutions. Uh, the Agence Française de Développement is a French public institution that implements France's policy in the areas of development and international solidarity. Uh, its mission is to contribute to the economic, social and environmental progress of low and middle income countries. And in practical terms, this mission is carried out by providing loans, grants, expertise or technical assistance to a wide variety of, of actors, uh, states, uh, local authorities, public companies, foundations, NGOs, and so on. It has a network of eight, 85 agencies throughout the world, and the group finances and monitors over 4,000 development projects and programs. Uh, and in 2019, the group's commitments were around 14 billion euros. Um, Proparco is a majority-owned subsidiary of the AFD, and it is responsible for development projects with the private sector. Uh, in, in 2019, Proparco committed 2.5 billion euros to projects around the world. Um, and you will, you will be seeing on, over the course of the presentation uh, how each of our institutions uh, contribute to this program we are discussing today. Um, both AFD and Proparco have been active in Cambodia for many years through a number of projects. And one of the most uh, interesting projects is this access to finance program for water and electricity operators, which we will be presenting. And the reason why both of our institutions are here today is that the first phase of this program was uh, carried out by the AFD. And the second phase, which is currently under planning, will be carried out by Proparco. In order to ensure that this second phase is as much of a success as the first one has been, uh, we thought it would be useful to have a presentation with representatives from a number of uh, Cambodian banks who are present today. Uh, our aim is to explain what we have achieved in this sector up until now and why we think a second phase is needed and why this represents an interesting opportunity for Cambodians, for Cambodian banks to work with a customer segment that is currently uh, underserved by, by, the, by the financial sector. Um, and and we, we hope to, to explain how we intend to structure this second phase in order to make it as useful as possible for these small water and electricity operators and as attractive as possible for our partner banks in this, in this program. This presentation will involve a number of participants, which will each address different aspects of the program. You can see their, their photographs on screen, and I will now ask each of them to, to please say a, 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 few, a few words of introduction on, on, on each of them. And I will take them in, in the order of, of, uh, of this slide. So Anne, if you, if you could please uh, introduce yourself in a few words. Thank you, Gonzague, and good afternoon to all. Uh, pleasure to be here. I'm Anne Chapanon. I'm, uh, I've been working over the last 15 years on the provision of um, access to basic services. In, um, in Africa and uh, in Asia. Uh, I'm currently the Deputy Country Director for the French Development Agency in, uh, in Cambodia since uh, 2017. And uh, I had the pleasure um, to, to work on this uh, access, to program, finance, access to Finance program, uh, particularly with uh, all stakeholders, uh, including the FTB, and I will be happy to share with you the main findings today. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Um, Cécile, would you like to, to introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Cécile, and I'm the co-founder and director of Severe, a consulting company that has been working in Cambodia for now more than eight years, uh, and mainly in the energy and wash sector. Uh, 
For this particular um, assignment, CVA was asked to conduct a feasibility study for phase two of this access to finance program uh, with the specific goals to analyze the evolution of the energy and water sectors and estimate the market size and credit line size. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cecile. Uh, Mr. Diet, would you care to introduce yourself, please? Thank you, Kunza. Good afternoon, uh, everyone from uh, Phnom Penh. Uh, my name is Chong. I'm the CEO of Foreign Trade Bank of Cambodia. Uh, I've been involved in banking for about 20 years. Uh, the last uh, four or five years with uh, Foreign Trade Bank, before that with uh, ANZ and the National Bank of Cambodia. With FTB, uh, as I joined, actually, the project already started. Uh, Anne uh, is here and some of my team uh, work on uh, phase one, uh, you know, together uh, with AFB since uh, 2014 and that project phase one completed. And now we are here today to uh, discuss and talk about, you know, what's possible for phase two with the support and uh, program uh, by uh, Propacto. So look forward to the discussion and a pleasure to be with uh, you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Magali, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Gonzag. Good afternoon, everyone. So I, I am Magali Roux. I, um, I am the regional director for Proparco in Southeast Asia. Um, I've, be, I've been based uh, here uh, in Bangkok since 2017. And I've been working for Proparco for the past 10 years. And before that, uh, I was involved in the banking sector in France for about 10 years as well. Uh, and I am very happy to be here today to introduce to you this uh, uh, second phase of this program that we would like to implement with, with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Magali. Uh, Lorena, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Gonzague. Hello, everyone in Paris, and uh, good afternoon for everyone in Nyon Peng and Bangkok. Uh, my name is uh, Lorena Shara. I am a senior investment officer We're working in the FII team uh, dedicated uh, to Latin America and Asia. I am based in Paris, and um, I am the team leader for the Access to Finance Project uh, Phase 2. And today, I'm delighted to be the moderator. Thank you, Lorena. And, and to finish, um, I am Gonzague Montréal. I head the Latin America and Asia team within the Financial Institutions Division of Proparco in Paris. Um, and, and I oversee uh, our activities with uh, financial institutions in, in, these, in these two regions and among them this important, uh, this important program in, in Cambodia. So th th thank you all for, for your introductions. And now as, as a way of uh, kickstarting the presentation, we will be screening a short video, which I hope will give you uh, some context on the project and, and a good overview of, of what we will be discussing in greater detail uh, later on. So um, Veronique, if you please, yes, thank you. At the time we appraised the project, access to water and electricity were really low in uh, rural areas, 30 to 60 percent, depending on zones for water, around 35 percent for electricity. The project is a unique partnership between public and private uh, actors. The EU provides technical assistance to a local bank that provides in turn loans to local enterprises. These enterprises provide access to water and to electricity. ຍັງປະກາດອາຊີບກໍາ <laughs> 
tình mà dân lực muốn dân ạt dân ạt đắng dân ạt đại riết dân chơi tập đã cứ bắt đầu chơi bị ép thì bị nóng cấm chơi non cứ bắt đầu phơi ở phơi ạt kĩ sinh lý tăng áo nó bật đi tập bóng đá nhà kĩ sinh lý cấm chơi chơi cấm râu tam dạ thanh niên kia ép thì bị ní ban bắt đầu là tập hiệp ở giờ ai nhận co sang chơi ăn stock rip chậm chơi một tờ bùm tập bị stung để bây giờ mò phải lật chơi tập sát hơi nương dương rip chậm bận lãng chọc tập đo phun cam vị thi ní chui ao khi nhom che phơi tè tập chơi riêng rót ngay cầm rong ở thị bình nhà tranh cả bà riêng tiệp hơi đối chân này dễ kịch tha dễ bị hai chuyển biến là tập hiệp khăn ông ca này song tập lập tập vĩnh vì muốn bật bật đằng đầu miền cà phê ba phê ba dầu phê ba rẻ màu vị chân ngài rồi một tiết bàn tập sát hơi miền à rong rung phơ và hơi sờ bài rì rì để bàn tập sát bà bà bàn sưu sờ cụp hiệp vị bàn là o After the great success of this credit line to the Foreign Trade Bank, the FD Group decided to launch a second phase of the project. This will be handled by ProParco, a FD subsidiary dedicated to the private sector. We will also provide credit line to commercial banks in Cambodia, together with some risk-sharing mechanism to encourage them to lend to the energy and water sector. So this was a, sh a short overview of the program. I'm, I'm sad to see that some of you were not able to see the video or, or hear the sound. This, this video is, is otherwise available uh, on the internet, I believe, and we, we, will, we will provide the, the link so that you can, you can view it at, at a later time if you haven't been able to do so, to do so now. Um, maybe to, to, to give you an idea of what we will be discussing today, um, first of all, we will be looking at the first phase of the Access to Finance program, which was been, has been carried out by AFD since 2014. Uh, for that, uh, Anne will present the structure of this program and the results it has managed to achieve. Uh, we will then hear from Mr. Diet what has been FTB's experience as a partner institution in the, in the first phase of the program. Um, Cecile will then present the findings of the preliminary study that uh, was conducted by her consulting firm at the request of Parco to analyze the results of the first phase and to quantify the market potential for a second phase. And finally, Magali will explain how we intend to structure this second phase and what is our proposal to the institutions that could be interested in joining this, this second phase. So maybe I, I can leave the floor to, to Anne if, if, you, if you please want to start. Thank you, thank you, Gonzague, and it's uh, again a pleasure to be here to share with you the main uh, findings today, along with uh, Mr. Bitzel from uh, from the Foreign Trade Bank. Um, uh, the idea here is to present you the global structure and the main findings of this uh, program that has been uh, financed and uh, implemented with the support of uh, the AFD as well as the European Union and mobilizing uh, some uh, high quality expertise, particularly from the GRET and uh, Artilia, Artilia group. In practical terms, this project has been uh, implemented between uh, 2014 and uh, 2019, and uh, it had originally two major objectives. The first one was to basically extend uh, reliable, reliable and affordable access to both safe drinking water and electricity in uh, rural areas, as the situation back uh, in the early 2010 was significantly different uh, from today. But doing so, um, aiming at extending the access, the objective was also to address major challenges in accessing finance for operators able to provide service. Uh, 
We knew at that time that there were some existing borrowing needs, but for several reasons, including lack of collaterals, uh, lack of uh, uh, financial and technical uh, expertise or ability to support, operators were facing difficulties in expanding their activities. So these were the two major objectives based on the situation of the two sectors to basically decide to develop this access to finance program. So you will, you will see here a scheme that can briefly explain you, and I, I know that Cecile will, will tell you more about it also later, but you have here basically the French Development Agency as a financial and technical partner, along with the EU providing grants, have you seen, 2.3 million grants. So the main support was to the foreign trade bank through both a loan facility uh, to support the activity in, of the bank in extending loans to operators and through a risk sharing mechanism called ARIS to intensify I mean, the bank in taking risk on small water operators and rural electrification enterprises. Complementary to these financial tools, we had um, a grant to provide technical assistance for a tailor-made program for FTB, which we designed together, addressing, of course, important challenges in terms of core business, like credit risk management, environmental and social, but of course, technical and financial assessments of these electricity and water sector. Also, to support the efficiency of the, of the program, the idea was to support the small water enterprises and the rural electrification enterprises in, in being more formalized, in being strong, stronger technically, and of course, able to better answer the requirements by the foreign trade bank. Again, thanks to the EU grants, we have extended technical assistance to these uh, operators through GRET and Artelia in consortium. Finally, as expansion of, of universal access was a key aspect for us, we have decided to allocate some investment grants exclusively to the water sector to improve the connection rate for ID for older people. So if we try to summarize here, you have basically a loan facility and a risk sharing mechanism to the FTB. You have the idea of extending adapted financial product to the small water operators and rural electrification enterprises. You have a package of technical assistance both to FTB and to the small operators, and you have investment grants on the social dimension. As a result, out of the credit line of $15 million that was extended, we had 16 loans extended to the, the electricity sector and 31 to the water sector, um, worth respectively $2.7 and $7.6 million. We know that the big difference between water and electricity is mainly linked to the fact that there are more opportunities to access finance, particularly through the Rural Electrification Fund managed by EDC for the REE than for the small water enterprises. And we can see that FTB has developed an, a, 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 a financial product fitting the needs, particularly in terms of maturity with the, with the average 10 years maturity. Complementary and to this loan, and in order, of course, to um, to comfort the bank in extending these loans, AFD has implemented a risk sharing mechanism with the bank. Basically, AFD sharing 50% of the credit risk with the bank in order for FTB to reduce the level of collaterals and to increase its commitment in the sector. Can you allow me here to detail a bit more on the kind of technical assistance package that has been also provided both to FTB and uh, to the operators? As I was briefly mentioning before, we had, of course, uh, for the FTB, 
um, support in marketing the new products for the water and the electricity sector. We had also a support in terms of strengthening anti-money laundering and fight against terrorism, which are key aspects for AFD Group as a financial institution. And finally, we had also, of course, the, the, the support to the, to the bank in the, in the reinforcement of the, of the risk management and the credit risk analysis. On the operator side, and based on the diagnosis we had of the difficulties they were facing, the support has been brought from the very beginning to the end of the process. From the very beginning in the sense of accompanying operators in, um, in developing uh, credit requests compliant with the bank's requirements, but also um, support to the technical feasibility study and technical assessment of the project. But it was important for us to go further than that and to accompany the, the, the operators all along the civil works uh, for the so civil works implementation by basically providing support on supervision and ensuring quality of investment, which is a key aspect for sustainability. Last but not least, the, the last bunch of grants has been dedicated to investment grants. We know that it's not easy for operators to address some uh, less or more vulnerable uh, populations which are not necessarily in capacity to finance their, their access. So the idea of the investment grant was definitely to support access for the most vulnerable population using the ID poor system uh, established uh, by, the, by the government of Cambodia. Also, uh, additionally to these aspects of universal coverage, one of our major concerns was relating to the water quality, quality of the water provided to the users, and also the fact that operators would be paying full attention to this critical aspect. So on this investment grant, we have been able also to accompany the company in testing the quality and to, let's say, also mobilize the clients in a regular follow-up of quality of water. And finally, of course, as it is the, usually the case, we have been promoting uh, all aspects uh, related to, uh, to hygiene. I think it's important here to mention that on this slide we have the major results of this unique partnership with the FTB in Cambodia, which has been contributing to several sustainable development goals and of course to the national strategy in terms of universal coverage for water and electricity. I will not be long, but you can see that you had uh, 27 water treatment plants constructed or rehabilitated and 600 kilometers of networks. We had also on the electricity sector more than 400 kilometers of uh, medium voltage lines and 345 for low voltage. And in terms of access, respectively 40,000 households connected to water and 28,000 households connected to electricity. Um, and I will let here the floor to Mr. Ditsochal uh, to share his vision as a partner of AFD on this journey since uh, 2014. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. And again, good afternoon, everyone uh, from Phnom Penh. Uh, good morning to uh, some of you in Europe. Uh, I noted some of our, our friends and banking colleagues from uh, uh, banks in Cambodia. Uh, good to meet. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, are not able to meet, uh, I think, physically, but uh, finally, we are able to discuss about phase two uh, online. Uh, so I would like to start with uh, FTB. Actually, FTB is a uh, first commercial bank in, in the country. Uh, our vision is to be the preferred commercial bank in, in Cambodia, but at the same time, to pursue that, one of our mission is to operate in an environmentally and socially responsible manner. 
So with respect to that mission, uh, when the AFD project came about uh, in 2013 and 14, that was a, a call uh, for us to address the need of the financing gap by the uh, rural uh, water supplies and uh, electricity supply. And with the support from the uh, AFD at that time, and of course the government and, and the EU, we were able to enter into the agreement and started the project in 2014. Uh, actually, Anne Sly has covered most of you know, what I would like to talk. So I will just briefly go through a number of points from our perspective to share his experience and maybe key uh, outcome from uh, phase one. So the first point is around uh, background and objective. Uh, some of you may be aware that as a emerging market, uh, like any other market, access to uh, reliable, affordable, clean drinking waters and stable supply of electricity has been a challenge. So I think FTB, from that perspective, as a financier, uh, we see the opportunity, but we also got our own constraint in terms of uh, fundings, in terms of uh, uh, lending criteria and appetite. Uh, with that, uh, we approach the opportunity presented by FTB, you know, from both commercial and uh, social sense, and jointly take all the challenge. Uh, the opportunity we also agree at that time was should presented by by the sectors uh, water supply there's uh, several hundreds licensed by the government to operate uh, electricity uh, uh, enterprise also licensed by the government to uh, extend the coverage uh, throughout the country in line with the government objective uh, to boost the economy so from that perspective, uh, we started the project and addressed the objective in terms of financing gap, but you know, ultimately is to provide access uh, to the rural community with clean waters and uh, reliable electricity supply. Uh, from financing perspective, we also play our role in terms of uh, increasing financial inclusion. Point two, in terms of roles and uh, participation, uh, one of our slides showing the diagram, that perfectly summarize in terms of uh, our role. Uh, first, a commercial bank, but at the same time, uh, our role in this project is more than uh, profit-oriented, but rather from as a social a capitalist that bridge the gap in terms of uh, accessing finance by uh, SWE and IE. Uh, and then finally, extending that reach to uh, several thousand of households in uh, various provinces uh, across the country. So as part of the project, uh, we were able to operate uh, reach out to those clients under the uh, funding mechanism that you saw from the diagram is that we've got funding up to 15 million US dollar from the AFD and then we could on lend to eligible SWE and IEE uh, that have financing need to expand to establish over a commercial term of up to 10 years with actually quite attractive uh, commercial rate. And one of the, uh, I think, key success uh, to that was the risk sharing mechanism, 50% covered by uh, AFD, and also the less or lower level of uh, collateral requirement compared to our normal traditional lending arrangement we have with other client or that point potentially uh, some other banks uh, can share perspective that uh, uh, we tend 
to be lending uh, on a commercial term where it's uh, need to be fully secure in addition to sufficient uh, We were able to support 47 operators of that 31 uh, small water supply operators and 16 uh, rural uh, electricity suppliers uh, with the total fund uh, approved of 10.4. As we speak today, that amount now reduced and repaired by uh, uh, those borrowers to just around 7 million. Uh, more interesting, I think, is the ultimate impact where more than 100,000 of uh, households in those uh, rural areas and province uh, were able to access clean, drinkable uh, waters and also reliable and affordable electricity uh, to support their, their life. So throughout the project, uh, and as we conclude in 2019, we were able to, you know, from our own observation, there's a few that I can share specifically is that our team uh, at the bank level, we were able to gain uh, deeper insight and understanding on technical front of uh, water supplies and electricity, but at the same time, credit market to that sector the potential is enormous and FTB alone uh, cannot cover and of course I think we need more of the stakeholder to join hand uh, uh, to expand. Under the uh, program we also uh, got technical support covering uh, uh, various aspects you know from credit policies, uh, financial modeling, so all of those technical uh, aspects have helped and equip our credit team in particular uh, to approach financing you know, of that nature in different ways. Uh, and, and that has been uh, a very positive uh, and, and will be a key a capability going forward for us to approach this and other sectors that have a similar uh, structure. Another point for us is we were able to work with various uh, stakeholders. Uh, we play our role, but uh, our stakeholders, both uh, local authorities uh, and international uh, partners, uh, also able to uh, you know work closely uh, address uh, the cause. Uh, one final point in terms of uh, the uh, learning, I think, is the credit uh, process and workflow, which uh, us, we are looking forward to phase two, uh, it is something that if you ask one of the learning point, that may be the case. It's uh, the turnaround time of credit uh, that we should have done it maybe slightly differently to shorten uh, the uh, credit turnaround time from uh, submission to disbursement. But regardless of that, I think finally we reached uh, 47 eligible uh, borrowers uh, covering more than 100,000 of household. The impacts as you saw from eyes, from Anne's slide, uh, that, that's a uh, significant result and positive. So way forward for us, uh, uh, FTB, I think we are managing existing portfolio according to the uh, uh, agreement and obligation we've got with the AFD uh, continue to work closely to make sure that you know all going is plain uh, but at the same time we also extend our support uh, on our own term to those uh, customers and some other customers in the sectors as well we were able to extend support uh, uh, along the line when the program started and now we also do that uh, but of course, the impact and the scales that are uh, presented by the SWE and IEE, uh, a lot more uh, to be done in order to reach uh, 
the objective as well as the development plan and goal set by the government. So uh, with that, we look forward to uh, having the opportunity to work uh, with both AFD and uh, Propago as uh, phase two is being nailed out. Uh, if possible, uh, hopefully we get that opportunity to work again. Uh, in the space of about 10 minutes, I try to, you know, uh, to provide and summarize what we've done over four or five years uh, project length. I hope that you all find that uh, relevant, useful and helpful. Uh, I look forward to uh, listening more and uh, uh, hearing from some of you and ad addressing some of the questions. But on behalf of the FTB team, you know, I would like to express uh, my sincere thanks to AFD. Uh, to Propago, to EU, you know, for the project and specifically for this opportunity to speak and share with you all today. Uh, I look forward to having a uh, fruitful discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Edith. I think this is this is a very very interesting, uh, both uh, for us and and for the participants in this webinar to hear from you. What is your own impression of, of uh, your participation in in the first phase of the program? And thank you also, Anne, for for the presentation, uh, which I think was a very a very interesting overview of of the first phase of the program. Um, we will now be taking some questions from the participants. I see that some questions have already been asked. You, don't forget that you can ask questions in the questions tab on the right side of your screen. Um, and I would ask uh, Lorena if if you if you can please uh, raise the questions that have come from the from the participants. Yes, yeah, sure. So uh, we have a first question for Anne regarding uh, the ARIS. Uh, please, Anne, can you tell us more about uh, uh, how ARIS uh, exactly work? Um, yes, Serena. Um, I think what is important to mention is that the rationale for ARIS is that we know it's not necessarily easy for banks to approach the water and electricity sector, and even less the small water enterprises and rural electrification enterprises. Um, these businesses uh, generate cash, but still for banks it's not, this, not easy to approach considering the peculiarity of, uh, of these sectors and challenges, as well as the long-term investment needed. So the idea of the ARIES mechanism is basically to share the risk with the bank, to push the bank to extend loans. Our commitment on AFD sites with FTB was that in case the small water enterprises or rural electrification enterprises would not pay back. AFD would cover 50% of the unpaid amount. And the objective here, of course, it's a gentleman agreement with the bank, but the objective here is to ensure that the bank is incentivized to go to finance the sector. I, will, I can just mention that we had two options in terms of ARIS guarantee. It can be a portfolio guarantee, so we have a common agreement on a list of criteria with the bank, and the bank can move without our prior approval. And we have the individual um, agreement in case basically uh, an operator is not fully compliant with the criteria, and then we have a discussion, and if we, found, if we find both that the operator has to be supported, then we move on an individual agreement. Hope it clarifies. Okay, thank you so much, Anne. Um, now we have, uh, let me see, two questions for Mr. Social. Uh, Mr. Social, so the first, uh, the first question, uh, which aspects of the technical assistance provided by AFD did you find the most useful uh, during phase one? Uh, thank you for the question. As I mentioned, there's a number of components uh, provided to, AF, uh, to FTB uh, by the AFD, uh, you know, out of those components just now, I touch uh, this uh, uh, briefly. Uh, one is in terms of uh, improving the uh, uh, credit and uh, related policies and procedures. Uh, one of those uh, that I need to highlight, uh, we also 
strengthen the risk management and from that perspective we've got the support uh, to have a number of policies in place. Uh, uh, one of the highlights is on the environmental and social uh, risk management. But you know, I would I would read less in terms of all those uh, technical assistance uh, under each of those components. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, some other aspect our team could also learn and appreciate is you know it's not that easy to produce. You saw from the video the water from the river, you know, to get into a very clean, drinkable water. It's gone through various process. Uh, so from that perspective, I think our team could also understand the technical part on the electricity and water uh, supplies that uh, enable us uh, to expand uh, the way forward uh, for us as well as far as uh, uh, you know our role in terms of reaching finance is concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sushat. So we have uh, another question for you as well. Um, so did you generate new business relations with SMEs uh, that subscribe a loan from your bank uh, on phase one? Uh, yes, uh, we had. Uh, actually, along, as I already mentioned in the uh, presentation as well, I, I mentioned that, uh, you know, as we do under the project, but at the same time, uh, those who were not uh, eligible under the project, we could uh, support them on our own term. Uh, even post project, we continue to extend the support uh, in various form, uh, either through uh, lending products and some other related uh, uh, products that we have, uh, and uh, that's what they need. So uh, we have an, uh, and we gradually expand actually uh, from that perspective. Thank you. Thank you, that's great to hear. Uh, okay, so you are the lucky one <laughs> because you have two more questions. <laughs> um, so uh, the next one, um, attendees would like to know what's the average interest rate FTV charges to, uh, to the, the small operators. Uh, under the existing uh, program in phase one, uh, out of those uh, uh, 47 customers, the average is around uh, 7%. Some of them slightly uh, above 7 uh, because we've got uh, a few trenches from uh, AFD, uh, different cost of fund uh, uh, structures. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, as, we, uh, as the margin is added, but I could say average uh, uh, 7%, exclude fee, yeah. Okay, thank you. And I think uh, we have a last question uh, for you, uh, Mr. Social as well. Uh, what would FTV do differently if you join the phase two of this program? Uh, if we are given the opportunity to, uh, to join again, uh, hopefully that will be the case. Uh, I mentioned uh, briefly also, uh, every transaction, uh, not that big. So we approach it from a project financing uh, perspective uh, that lengthen the uh, turnaround time from application of the loan through to disbursement. So I think if uh, we get the opportunity, uh, myself and uh, uh, my team, I think we will discuss in terms of how we can uh, shorten the turnaround time. Uh, that reflecting through you know, uh, various uh, credit flow, uh, either at FTB or at the uh, borrower side. Uh, hopefully the average turnaround time can be shortened uh, uh, then the need of the borrower can uh, can be made on time as well and the project is delivered on schedule from that perspective yeah thank you thank, thank you very much mr deaton i think you're right it, it's a it's a concern for for all, for all of us involved in this project to to try and make it as as simple and as efficient as possible and so we we, we will of course be 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 looking for your feedback on on, on phase two and and seeing how we can how we can make things as as uh, 
as uh, easy as, as possible for, for the partner banks that work with us. Um, thank, thank you very much for, for, for these answers. Um, I think we can, we can move on to the next section of this uh, presentation. Before, before we, we start this uh, presentation on the, um, the feasibility study that was carried out by uh, Sevea on, on, uh, for the phase two of the program, we would like to uh, offer you a poll, which I believe is being posted on the right hand side of your, of your screen. Um, there are several questions there. Uh, these are questions for which the answers will be will be given during during the next presentation. This is to to see how well you know this market uh, and and how much you know about this this market in Cambodia. So if if you can if you can take the time to 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 look at the poll and answer the different questions, uh, and 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 in the meantime uh, we will start this this presentation, which will which will allow us to 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 give the the, the answers to these different uh, these different questions. So, if if uh, if I may, uh, Cecile, can I can I leave you the floor to 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 present uh, the, the this this part of the, the the results of your of the study you've conducted? Yes, of course. Thank you, Gonzag. Um, so, hi again, everyone. Uh, as a reminder, my name is Cecile, and I'm the director of Sevea. And uh, and as part of the assignment, we conducted a feasibility study for the phase two to first analyze the evolution of both sectors, so the energy and water sector, uh, since phase one, and secondly, to estimate the market size, the total market size. For this study, uh, we're surveyed in total more than 200 REs and more than 200 SWEs. And then there were, of course, some interviews with stakeholders, both from the energy and the water sectors. So, um, first, let's look at the result from our first step that consisted in assessing the current state of both REs and SWEs. As both sectors have been changing quite significantly since phase one that started seven years ago, it was important to reevaluate re the profiles of those operators. So, I'll first start with REs. REs have a relatively good seniority. Uh, 15 years in average for the operators in phase one. Uh, REs are all licensed and there are currently 352 licensed operators. REs network are expanding very rapidly and this because of the government electrification target on one side, but also the willingness of household to connect on the other. REs have a lot of requirements from the regulatory body, which is uh, EAC, so the Electricity Authority of Cambodia, both in terms of technical standards, performances, and reporting. These, uh, these requirements are enforced and controlled. That means that the REs have to have a certain level of structure and a minimum level of reporting. In addition, REs tend to have their financials relatively in hand. Uh, most of them use billing softwares and sometimes accounting software. They have yearly income that can vary between 200,000 as a minimum and up to 1.5 million. Knowing that some of the biggest ones are serving up to 50,000 households or even supplying uh, electricity to industries in SCZs. Finally, REs can benefit from uh, a, support, a public support mechanism uh, offered by the Rural Electrification Fund. I'm going to refer to it as the REF. Uh, and the REF, among other things, offers a 0% interest rate loan to expand the grid to challenging areas. So the areas where it just doesn't make sense economically uh, to go for an RE. Now let's look a little bit at the SWE profile. Usually there are smaller and more family businesses. Uh, in Cambodia, you have around 400 operators with only 266 that are licensed. Compared to RE, the sector is less regulated. Uh, operators do have some requirements as part of their license. Uh, in terms of tariff, performance, reporting, quality, etc. But those requirements are less enforced than in the, in the electricity sector. 
their networks are expanding, uh, but slower than the ones uh, of Aries. And this is mainly because there are no such entity uh, as EDC, so the, the national utility, or even the rural electrification fund, uh, where both entities are actually pushing for expansion, uh, pushing for expansion. In addition, uh, SWEs face more difficulties to expand the network and lower willingness compared to the electricity sector of household to connect um, as households tend to have some kind of access to water already. In terms of financials, uh, less, uh, less structured than the RE sector, most of the time uh, they still don't have a proper accounting or billing system, though the adoption of accounting and billing softwares are growing. So on the other role, SWEs uh, can be considered a little more riskier than REs, but at the same time, uh, they represent over the next future a far bigger potential for expansion uh, as uh, SWE are, so the level of access to water is much lower than the level of access to electricity in Cambodia. Now let's have a look at the common characteristics for both actors. Uh, they both need technical support to ensure a better technical quality of the network, uh, technical quality of the, uh, of the energy or the water uh, that is being provided. Uh, in, the, in the movie, we talked about uh, some operators that improve the quality of the water that they were providing. Um, so definitely for this, they need guidance. In addition to that, uh, they need some type of mechanism to be able to access to loan at more reasonable conditions, uh, because some of them already have been able to access financing over the, the, the past years, but most of the time the conditions were not favorable. Um, and so for that program, such as uh, phase one of, uh, of the current program we're talking about, uh, with mechanisms such as ARIS allowed to open more generally the door to them to financing. Both of the businesses are capex intensive businesses as they constantly need funds to expand the network. But finally, uh, both uh, a good point and a strong posit positive point for both is that they have constant, stable and growing cash flows. Constant because they have constant and stable because they have a monopoly over their license area, uh, both for electricity and for water. Households have to pay their electricity and water bills monthly, uh, and they are constantly expanding their network uh, because of the regulation. So overall, uh, these two actors represent a significant opportunity uh, that is for now only partially tackled by financial institutions, as was mentioned uh, uh, by, by Ditch. Um, after having assessed the profile of REs and SWE, uh, we looked at, into their willingness to borrow. Uh, what came out was that 69% of the SWEs and 56% of REs uh, want to take a loan in the future. And this is mainly explained by their capex intensive, intensive activities and the fact that operators don't generate sufficient cash to cover their expansion and renovation costs. So to cover the totality of their expansion and renovation costs. In addition, RE, REs have lower willingness to borrow than SWEs and this mainly for two reasons. Uh, the first, is they can cover more of the funds required uh, with their own cash and equity, so they need less debt. Um, and the second is because of the REF, so the Rural Electrification Fund, which offers this 0% interest loan for expansion into challenging areas. But what is important to note is that um, it shouldn't be, this 0% uh, loan shouldn't be seen 
as a competition for phase two, but more as a, some kind of leverage. Um, indeed, the REF during phase uh, one, um, indeed during phase one, all of your operators that took a loan had from FTB had in parallel a loan um, with the REF. So the REF covers only a small part of the debt uh, requirements of the of the REs. And this is also because the REF is only used for expansion to non-economically viable areas. So not for renovation and not for densification. Now, as we see in the two graphs on the slides, uh, most REs and SWE uh, want to finance uh, expansion with their loan. SWEs also have a higher need for uh, renovation, and this is because a lot of the networks that were construct constructed were uh, less well designed and sized, uh, so they need to renovate as their, as their client base grow uh, more often. And uh, it is to be noted that sometimes uh, some of the pipe can be destroyed because of road construction. This might change for REs over the course of the next 10 years, uh, as the tendency will slowly shift uh, towards more renovation and less expansion as we reach uh, almost fully access to electricity. Now let's look a little bit at the second step of, uh, of our assignment, which was uh, the market sizing calculation. Um, in terms of methodology, uh, the evaluation of the debt requirement of the two sectors was based on two scenarios. Uh, the first one, the demand scenario, corresponding to the investment requested by operators. And the second one, the need scenario, uh, that corresponds to the investment uh, needed to reach the government targets. The demand scenario was absolutely needed uh, as the government targets can be sometimes ambitious and the market size was calculated as a, okay, <laughs> sorry for that. Um, and the market size was calculated as a weighted average of both scenario. For example, for water sector, the government's objective of universal access by 2030 are highly improbable. And so the demand scenario was given a far higher weight uh, than the need scenario in the calculation. So regarding the market size in itself, uh, we then estimated two levels. The first one, which corresponds to the total investment needed. So this independently, if it comes from debt, equity, grants, etc. Uh, this was evaluated as a, at 132 uh, million for REs and 200, almost 280 million for SWEs. Uh, the difference, as mentioned previously, the difference can be explained by mainly the, the difference in terms of access level. Uh, in rural area, the level of access to water is, is still uh, relatively low, Why, while um, for in the electricity sector, there, there are only 350 villages uh, left to be connected uh, to the grid. Uh, of course, villages doesn't mean households, so there are far more households that needs to be connected to the grid. The second level of uh, of this market sizing is the amount of investment that might be coming from debt. Um, so this to, to go from the uh, total investment to the investment coming from debt, what was applied was the share that would be coming from debt, the willingness of the operators to borrow, and of course their capacity to borrow. Applying those factors, we ended with market sizes around 47 million for REs and 40 million for SWEs. With an average loan of 
184,000 for REs and 240,000 for SWEs. In addition to the two sectors that were already included in phase one, so SWE and REs, uh, Propaco decided for phase two to include two new sectors with high potential, energy efficiency and renewable energies. So let's look first at energy efficiency. Because energy efficiency sector is still at its early days in Cambodia, uh, we decided for that study to focus on the industry subsector. Uh, very high cost of electricity in Cambodia negatively affects uh, their competitiveness in the region. So energy is often listed as the number one problem in, this, uh, in the industry sector. So energy efficiency is often seen as a way to reduce production costs, uh, similarly to renewable energy. Within this subsector, four target groups were identified, government factories, food and beverage, the ice factories, and the brick factories. Here, I'll just give a couple of examples of potential investment that could be done uh, in these subsectors. Um, so, for example, you can have replacement of boilers, inefficient boilers, you can have replacement of lighting system, uh, more efficient machines, more efficient kilns. Um, and in terms of investment, it can, it can go as low as 30K, for a, a replacement of a boiler, uh, up to 200,000 for a replacement of a kiln. Uh, the reason why we don't have 40K listed here is that uh, most of uh, the initial demand uh, for debt in this sector will come from programs, uh, will be originated through programs. Uh, there are a number of programs such as the uh, switch, uh, the EU funded switch project from GGGI that is focusing on energy efficiency in the government sector, uh, ADB that is looking at uh, energy efficiency throughout the different sectors, UNIDO that is um, providing uh, feasibility study in the industry. So all those projects, uh, they'll be providing technical assistance but absolutely no financing solutions for the entire needs. Um, there are programs that provide a part of subsidy, but no, there are no solutions that cover the entire uh, financing needs. So through these programs that are, through these programs that are currently implemented in Cambodia, uh, there will be a number of actors uh, with feasibility study and with willingness to implement those uh, those energy efficient uh, projects that will be looking for financing. Likewise, for the renewable energy sector, uh, we, we identified four types of projects with potential. Uh, solar rooftop, solar water pumping in, in the agricultural sector, biodigester and biogas. It is to be known that in Cambodia, the solar rooftop market for now is uh, constrained uh, by the regulation, but even with this regulation in place currently, there is still a potential for financing uh, for solar rooftop uh, in the industry sector that don't have a lot of activity at night. So basically the idea uh, at studying both energy efficiency and renewable energy was to see what could be the potential um, project that could realistically happen. We were really conservative in the estimates that we did because these two sectors are really new in Cambodia and the regulation sector is still evolving. Uh, but still, at the end, uh, combining both, uh, we ended up with a 20 million debt need uh, for both sectors. So just to summarize uh, what we've been seeing throughout the different slides, uh, four different categories of uh, sectors uh, that could be targeted by this phase two of the program, uh, which and those four would represent almost 110 million uh, opportunity uh, opportunity for debt financing. 
Uh, what is interesting to see is that despite the COVID uh, situation that we've been having this year, uh, those sectors are a lot less impacted or almost untouched um, compared to other sectors of the, of the industry. So with this in mind, we really think that uh, this program, this phase two of the program can be a very good opportunity for banks to tackle these new markets with uh, the, make the, the support of the ARIS mechanism, reducing the risk uh, coming from, uh, from this type of projects and type of actors. Thank you very much and I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you very much, Cecile. Uh, I think this this gives gives a very a very good idea of uh, the market we are trying to to address with with uh, phase two. Um, maybe there are some questions from from the participants. I see that some questions have already been asked. Please please do ask any questions you may have in in the questions tab on the right of your screen. And uh, in in the meantime, Lorena, do, would you like to start with with the questions that have already been raised? Yes. So thank you, Cecile, for your presentation. The first question is about the um, SMEs. How many SMEs were surveyed for the market study? So yeah, thank you, Lorena. Um, so it was a combination of different uh, surveys that were conducted uh, uh, depend dependently from the, the question that were asked, but in average, more than 200 for both sectors for each sector, sorry, 200, more than 200 for the REs and more than 200 for the SWEs. Okay. And now uh, we have another question. Uh, how, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> how do REs and SWEs currently finance themselves? So they, so of course we looked at this. Um, so I'll just give you some of the results that we found. Um, so for REs, 63% uh, uh, are being financed by commercial banks. Uh, no, even a little bit more. So let's say there were, yes, around between 60 and 70% are financed by commercial banks. And then you have uh, the REF, so the Rural Electrification Fund that I was mentioning that financed 22%. And then you had like 5% coming from MFIs or relatives. For SWEs, uh, so it's around 70%, like even a little bit more, 80% coming from commercial banks or the, or the program. Uh, and then it's 20% coming from MFIs and 1% uh, coming from relatives. Okay. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, we have a last question. Uh, what are the main risks associated with REEs and SWEs? Okay, that's a, that's a tricky question. Um, so I think for SWEs, uh, for me, the main risk would come from the fact that, as we say, they are more family business. Uh, so a lot don't have proper technical knowledge. There has been a lot of programs, uh, especially implemented by Gret, uh, who was in, the, in phase one, supporting technically uh, the SWEs. So it's both in terms of technical knowledge, but also in terms of operations and financials. Uh, as, we, as I mentioned, uh, there are now no proper um, accounting and billing system in place, no proper reporting. Um, so, so for me, this would be the main risk for the SWEs. Um, plus, in addition, what I said, and, it, and it's not something um, that never happens, uh, the fact that sometimes roads, especially in rural areas, are being constructed and SWEs are usually not informed before. And when the roads are constructed, the pipes are, uh, can be destroyed. Um, maybe maybe a one last point, uh, but which varies completely from one area to the other, would be the rate at which people will connect to, to the network. Uh, because if there were um, like projects funded by ADB, uh, which are constructing 
uh, wealth uh, at household level, people will tend less to connect to the pipe uh, than when they don't have household level solutions. This is happening less and less. Uh, there has been uh, lesson learned, uh, but this was still the case. So there are still areas where people have a lot of wells at household level, and so um, they might connect less. For REs, um, what I would say is uh, maybe something that could happen, uh, but it has, but uh, it already happened. It's the reduction of the tariff. Uh, so this was significant a couple of years ago uh, because before there was no regulation in terms of what tariff they could apply. So it could go as uh, as high as uh, one dollar per um, kilowatt hour um, because they all became distributors uh, of the EDC electricity. The tariff at which uh, they could sell to end user uh, became regulated and it reduced significantly and so at that moment it had impact on the financial situation of REs. This, even if this was to happen, uh, the impact would be far lesser uh, because uh, the government is not going to reduce significantly uh, the, the price for, for, for end user. Um, after I wouldn't see it that much as a, as a risk, uh, but more as an opportunity, uh, the network of REs are improving uh, and, and will tend to improve more and more. Uh, EAC is every year um, reinforcing the criteria, the operation criteria that they expect from uh, the REs. So this means that REs need to improve their operation. So even if they started, as we saw in the video, uh, with networks that were not really well designed or needs a lot of renovation or needs to be um, improved, they, they are regularly small steps uh, applied to, that are requested from them to improve this. Uh, definitely, there are supports needed in terms of technical assistance uh, to help them do that. Um, also for the RE, what I was uh, mentioning is that because you have EDC, EDC is supplying uh, to those RE, so EDC has an interest to see those RE increasing their electricity consumption that they buy from them. So in a sense, this also explains why the sector is evolving at a much faster pace than in the water, because you have an actor, a semi-private actor, uh, that has uh, interest in seeing the network operating uh, efficiently and growing. Thank you so much, Cecile. This is all for the Q&A session. Thank you, Cecile. Thank you, Lorena. Maybe we can go back for uh, for a second to, to the polls we, we opened at the beginning of your presentation, Cecile, and, and I can go through the questions with you and see how our participants have, have answered these polls and how how right or wrong they were and, and how well they know the sector. Um, the first question was, do you know how many REEs have a license in Cambodia? The, the answer that had the most votes was 352, and I think that's the right answer. So congratulations yeah. to our participants who seem to know this, uh, at least the electricity sector quite well. Um, the second question was, do you know how, how many of the REEs have said they would have an interest in requesting a loan in the future? So basically, how many, uh, what, what proportion of these uh, REEs uh, are potential clients for, for, for a bank participating in, in the program? The overwhelming majority answered 56% which I believe is also the right answer. Uh, I, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if, if maybe some, some of our participants have answered when, when the results have already been shown on, on, on the slide, but let, let, let's, let's continue. Um, the, the next question was, are there more or less uh, small water enterprises than there are uh, rural electricity enterprises in Cambodia? Uh, most participants seem to think there were more 
water enterprises than electricity enterprises? And the answer is the opposite. Correct. There are a bit more a bit more water enterprises than than electricity enterprises, but the the difference is not is not huge. Yeah. So Gozak, there are more licensed enterprises, uh, mm -hmm. but there are there are a lot more uh, not non licensed uh, water operators. So in total. Uh, there are more, if you combine both, there are more water operators than uh, uh, energy operators, electricity operators. Okay, so my, so my, my answers were, were not completely, completely correct and, and, and the, the non-licensed operators should be also taken into account, you're right. So, so our participants were again right in, in, their, in, the, in their majority. Uh, the fourth question was, uh, among the water operators that were surveyed, do you know how many of them have said they would have interest in requesting a loan in the future? Uh, in this case, the, the majority of the participants thought that it, uh, around 69% of, the, of these water operators had expressed this, uh, this willingness. And that is, again, the right answer. And the last last question we asked was, uh, what would be the, the the estimated debt need for uh, the two sectors uh, uh, taken together, water and electricity? Um, and and the the answer that that saw the, that that the majority of our participants chose was eighty seven million, and eighty seven million is again the right answer. So so the results of this poll are absolutely impressive, and and seem to indicate that they're. Our participants know these two sectors very well. Uh, it's probably also in part due to the fact that uh, a number of our AFD colleagues who uh, took a direct part in the, in the first phase of the program are attending this presentation. And so uh, thank you to them for attending and, and congratulations on the results of the first phase and, and for the knowledge they've gained in, in, in the, the, in, into these two sectors uh, uh, while, while preparing this program. Um, now we will move on to, to the to the next step of this of this presentation, which is to present uh, the second phase of the program. Um, uh, Magali will explain uh, what what we intend to do uh, with the second phase of the program and and what will be the, the structure of the the different components of the program um, and our proposal to institutions that could be interested in in joining this this second phase. So Magali, if, if, you, if you're ready, I, I, it, it's up to you. Yes, thank you, Gonzague. Um, so uh, good afternoon, everyone, again, uh, and good morning in, uh, in, in Paris. So benefiting from the uh, experience of AFD on this first phase that was just presented to you, and together with the positive results of the market study presented by uh, Cécile from CVA, we do believe that there is a real market opportunity in Cambodia to finance those operators, the SWE and the REs, with adapted financial products. As you've seen and as you uh, uh, have answered on the poll, uh, there is close to $100 million that needs uh, on those two sectors. Uh, we, we also believe that the technical assistance uh, program were the key component of the, of, the, um, of the program, showing very positive results and helping as well in uh, the design and the construction of quality infrastructure, which are uh, key to the sustainability, as I mentioned uh, earlier. So th this is why AFD Group um, is willing to promote a second phase of this uh, project that would be handled by Proparco for the private sector. We also identified some room for improvement, uh, mainly in, in the process between all stakeholders, as have been mentioned by uh, uh, Mr. Social, and uh, also in how to reach more, more impact. So in more details on the next slide, uh, what we have identified, um, so in terms of uh, the general design of, uh, of the program, uh, first we would like to, to extend the scope of the program by adding two high potential sectors, which are renewable energy and energy efficiency, as uh, Cecile presented to you. Uh, we also uh, would like to um, redesign the investment grant by focusing on a uh, connection of four households uh, and as such make it as efficient as possible and maximize uh, impact. Uh, we would also take into uh, consideration for the technical assistance some support to operators in terms of uh, reporting 
like uh, billing and accounting reporting that has been mentioned by, uh, by Cecilia already. We also believe that the technical assistant should be less involved uh, in the production of documents for the operator on an individual basis, but more uh, involved on capacity building at the sector level. So this is something we take into account in the design of the technical assistants. Uh, and in terms of process, uh, we, we think that uh, the, we, we would make the loan application as close as possible to the standard procedure in place within the banks. Uh, so compared to the phase one, we would make it shorter and, and simpler with less interaction, less, less back and forth between the bank, the operator and the technical assistant. Uh, and the operator would be able to, to use some uh, standardized templates uh, that the technical assistant would prepare uh, ahead and, and make available uh, to, them, to them. So if we look at the, um, the overall uh, scheme, so it's quite similar to the one that was presented by Anne for, for the phase one with Proparco as the focal point. Uh, in the program, providing uh, a loan and a guarantee uh, to the local banks uh, and the local banks in turn providing loans to the uh, operators. Probaco would also be in charge of mobilizing grants from the EU to finance the technical assistance and the investment grant. And Probaco would hire and manage the technical assistance. So it's uh, overall quite similar to what was presented earlier earlier to you. So this is what I just uh, mentioned. So what does it mean for, for the bank uh, then? So meaning you may be listening to us today. Uh, so the bank would have to promote the program and its products to the market to make sure uh, operators are aware of uh, the financial products they can uh, ask for. And then the bank would appraise the credit application and provide the loan to uh, the, the small operators. And finally produce some reporting to uh, Proparco. In terms of uh, technical assistance, uh, what we are thinking is to, to provide, of course, direct support to the, uh, the operators uh, in the loan application process um, by providing uh, templates that I, I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, also uh, in supporting the operators in their reporting, as I mentioned, and in project implementation. But most importantly, uh, the technical assistant would be uh, would provide capacity building to to the sector uh, through professional association, with, for example, um, uh, making available list of uh, specific consultants or engineers that could be pre-selected at the beginning of of the program, and which could help the operators on various topics like uh, the loan application, uh, the design of their project. Uh, so we believe this would be uh, something interesting. Um, also provide the standard tools and the templates that we mentioned for the loan application and design them uh, together with, with us and with the, the bank to make sure uh, it's in line with uh, expectations. Uh, the technical assistant would also offer trainings to the operators and also could set up uh, a list, a database of professional suppliers that the operator could reach and could work with in the, uh, in the implementation of, uh, of their project. The technical assistant would also be in charge of implementing the investment grant and to overall report to, to Proparco regularly on the progress of the project. And, and finally, if there is a need identified at the bank level, there will also be a possibility to provide technical assistance to the bank like AFD did for uh, FTB, but this will really depend uh, on the bank needs. So here we wanted to take a, a brief example just to show you how this could uh, work. Uh, so we take the example of uh, uh, Ms. Un, uh, who has already uh, connected 3,000 uh, households, and she wants to expand her network and connect 500 more and renovate as well part of the existing network. So she has a, an investment need of uh, 250K dollars and she wants to borrow 180K dollars. She already has some a good borrowing capacity with some assets, uh, but she already has loan. Um, and so what does she do? 
So she hears about the program thanks to the promotion that the bank uh, and uh, also maybe the, the professional association would do in, uh, in Cambodia on the market. And she reached out to, to the bank uh, to know what she, what she can get. She explained uh, her situation. Then the bank would explain what kind of condition uh, this company could get for, for the loan and would invite her to get help from the technical assistant to build the credit file. So with the help of the technical assistant and maybe some consultants and the template that are provided, this one is able to complete uh, a credit file and present it to the bank. So then the bank would approve the loan and the loan would be dispersed to, to this one, who would be able to expand her, her network. But along this process as well, uh, the operator is able to improve technical, not only uh, obtain financing, but also improve technical skills uh, from the support from the consultant, uh, maybe implement a better reporting, uh, maybe get some, get some training, get access to tools and to database. So it's uh, overall an expansion of the infrastructure, uh, but as well really improving technical technical skills of the operator. So we try to make an assessment of what kind of impacts uh, we could expect. Uh, from this uh, phase two. So this is just an example, uh, considering a, a facility of $40 million. So it can be with one, two or three banks. Uh, uh, this is not the point here, but just to, to show an example. So with $40 million that we could split among the four sectors as shown uh, uh, at the end of this uh, slide. Uh, so by lending uh, $12 million uh, to, to the bank to finance uh, REE, the assumption is that we could reach 64 uh, RE, and this would enable them to, to invest uh, close to $25 million. So you see there is a leverage uh, here on what they can invest. And this would also uh, enable to, to connect uh, 115,000 households uh, to electricity. Uh, then we have the, exa the example with uh, SWE. So by lending close to $40 million, uh, we assess this could reach 58 SWE, and they could invest in turn close to $20 million and uh, connect 68,000 uh, households uh, to, to, uh, to water. We have not assessed here uh, impact for energy efficiency or renewable energy um, because there is a diversity of projects that could be financed in those sectors, so it's quite difficult to, to assess uh, theoretical impacts. But of course, uh, these will have a strong impact as well. So now coming to the, the main terms. So I think we mentioned them all, all along this uh, presentation. Uh, but the condition we could offer uh, to banks and we would like to discuss with bank uh, interested in this program would be a facility of a minimum $15 million, one five. Uh, of course, it can be higher, but this would be a, a minimum for a tenor of up to 10 years. Uh, with a grace period of two to three years. Uh, ARIS is uh, the risk sharing mechanism that was mentioned earlier, and that could be also made available for banks uh, willing to uh, also uh, use this mechanism. And the use of fund, of course, will be to finance uh, one or, or the four sectors uh, that we, we mentioned uh, uh, earlier. And maybe just finally to, to conclude before we take the, the Q&A, just to give an indicative timeline. So uh, the first one on this um, timeline is uh, today, January, where we do this presentation to, to, to banks uh, interested in the project. And what we would like to do uh, in the course of January, February, is to have bilateral meetings with banks uh, interested in uh, knowing more about the program and discussing more in details uh, how we can implement this uh, program together so that we can launch, launch on our side an internal process uh, as well, which could be on the first and, and second quarter of, uh, of this year. And I think this was the last slide before the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Magali. Uh, in, indeed, we can, we can now take, uh, take some questions uh, from, the, from the participants uh, to, on, on, on the presentation of the second phase. 
Uh, Lorena, would you like to to start uh, to start listing the the questions from the participants? Yes, yeah, sure. So we have a question about reporting, Magali. Uh, what reporting will Pro, uh, Proparco require regarding the use of funds? Uh, so, in, in terms of uh, uh, reporting, that would be to give some de the details of the the beneficiary uh, of the loan that the bank will will provide. Uh, like the name, some financial indicators, the purpose of the loan, the location, the financial condition, and as well some uh, selected uh, impact indicator that we would uh, uh, define uh, together. Okay. Uh, we have another question. Uh, is there any study on the break-even point for SWE and REEs? I think maybe this is a, a question on which we, we can we can reach out to to Cecile, who yeah. who's done the the, the in depth study on, on the on the sector. I'm, yeah, I'm not right. sure I perfectly understand the question. I imagine the question is wh whether we've determined what uh, what financial terms would be needed uh, for the for the small operators to be able to efficient efficiently and, and profitably serve. Their, their their clients. I imagine that's the, the sense of this question. Or, or put put in other terms, what what is the what is the cost of funds that these operators need in order to be able to lend to their to their to their clients? I imagine that's the question. Do do, do you have any any input on this, Cecile, Reg regarding uh, uh, cost of financing for these small operators? Um, not really. I'm trying to think uh, the type of information that we looked into. Um, maybe, um, and I'm not sure if it's answering to the question, but in terms of uh, loan duration, for example, uh, we would need at least uh, four to six years for REs and six to ten for SWE with the typical amount that was mentioned previously. Um, but I, yeah, I am again. I'm not sure what uh, this break-even point is. One thing that's certain is that it, in in the process of um, of preparing this second phase, uh, we will have uh, talks with each of the interested banks uh, and and discuss with them uh, the financial structure that can meet their needs and the needs of their clients. And so we we will of course. Uh, look to to determine uh, financial terms that are workable from from the point of view of the bank and also from the point of view of, of the client in each of these sectors. So so I think this is something that uh, in in from a practical perspective will be addressed uh, a, a bit later on when we agree on the financial terms with each of the partner banks uh, in the program. All right. Okay, so um, we have a, a question for you uh, this time, Megali, about the capacity building uh, to the sector. Uh, could you provide uh, some clarifications about uh, cap uh, how the capacity, what capacity building, uh, sorry, to the sector would look like? Uh, what what the capacity building will cover? Uh, yes, I think this is something I mentioned on the slide about the technical uh, assistance. Uh, so, so what we have in mind today, but this is not exhaustive, and of course, this is something that will also be discussed by the the main players and the association and the and the technical assistant which will be uh, selected. Uh, is first to to build some tools to make them directly available for the operators, uh, like we mentioned um, for the the credit application. Um, the idea is to develop uh, templates in which the uh, operators could input uh, the basic required information uh, based on which the bank uh, could uh, uh, provide, uh, could run their the, the loan application process. So this is something that would be done by, um, by the TA and developed in coordination also with the banks, of course, to make sure uh, this complies with uh, the information that they would need. Uh, also by providing some training um, by setting up uh, something that we think uh, could be useful is a list of uh, uh, third party that can help the operators, be it consultants, engineers, uh, suppliers, uh, where the, the, 
uh, operators ca can buy uh, materials from. So also gathering all this information which is not available today uh, at the association level so that any operator, not only the one uh, being financing today with this program, but also maybe tomorrow, uh, can, can, can get access to directly. So this is the kind of thing that we, we have in mind. Uh, but this is not uh, definitive and not exhaustive uh, as of today. Thank you. Uh, we have another question regarding uh, the interest rate. What will be the interest rate uh, of the facility from, Propa from Proparco? This, I think, to, to, to go back to, to what I was saying earlier, this is something that is not uh, set in stone as of today. That is, is something that will be the result of our talks with each uh, potential partner bank. Uh, in order to ensure that the, the interest rate is uh, in line with the specifics of the bank uh, and compatible with, with what, uh, what the bank intends to do in, in, in using the funds. So this is something that we will discuss uh, separately with each, each of the banks that are interested in, in, in taking part in the program. Great. Uh, we have another interesting uh, question. Uh, how to apply for the funding? What are the requirements? Anyone? So how to apply for, for the funding for, to, to Probaco? Yes. That the question? Yes, for uh, so the second time. Yeah, reach yes, out to us. Time. You can just uh, contact us and we will uh, set up uh, uh, bilateral meetings as I showed in the timeline. That's the next step on our side is for the banks which are uh, interested in the program. Uh, you will have our, our contacts uh, or you may already have them, depending if we know each other already. So you just contact us and we will uh, organize a, a bilateral uh, session to discuss this uh, further. Great. And uh, We have one last question. Uh, what's the expected uh, timeline for implementation after establishing the credit committee? Uh, if it's uh, yeah, our, our credit committee internally, so I would say the timeline uh, uh, depends on both sides because then you, you mainly have to uh, negotiate the, the documentation. So uh, I would say uh, from starting the process uh, until the end, a few, few months, really depending on uh, uh, proactivity on, on each side. I don't know, Gonzaga, if you want to add something on, on this question. Yes, if, if, if that's the question, if, if the question is what what uh, what's the time between uh, Proparco's credit committee and the time we can disburse the loan to the partner bank, then indeed it, it's it's um, anything between uh, one and three months. I would say uh, three months would be a conservative estimate. Are, are there any any other questions, Lorena? You can you, you would like to to raise? No, I think this is all for Q and A uh, session. Um, just uh, Kim Lang uh, uh, will will like uh, to be provided with the contact uh, personal contact and email address. I think this is information we can provide after the webinar. Yes, absolutely. I think this is something we we, we will do after the webinar. Send each of the participants. Um, a message with with uh, with the necessary information to contact us. So that, that for sure we will do. Okay, this is all. For me. Thank you very much, Lorena. And um, so maybe maybe we can we can move on to a second poll. Uh, the the idea now is to have a bit of uh, feedback from from the from the participants. And um, so if you could please go to the to the the poll section on on the right hand side of your screen. Um, th these are more more direct questions to you as a representative of each of your institutions. Um, the first one is is uh, to try and, and and have an indication of your level of interest in participating in the second phase of this program, um, and wh whether whether you would be keen to have uh, bilateral discussions with our team. So uh, we'd be uh, very interested in in having your feedback. Uh, from that perspective, um, but if, if while, while you while you vote on these polls, maybe I, I can we can have a few words of uh, of conclusion to this uh, to this webinar. If there are no further questions, you, you, you still have some time to ask questions if there are any. But otherwise, we will we will be concluding after after we see the results of these polls. Um, 
and we, we, we hope this, uh, this webinar has been of interest to, to all of you and that it has served to give you a better understanding of what we've achieved in the past and what we intend to do to continue supporting the, the water and electricity sector. Um, it's of course key to the success of this program uh, to rely on, on trusted banking partners uh, who know their market, who have a significant presence on the ground uh, as we have done with FTB for the first phase of this program. And it's only with this, uh, with this partnership that we can reach these small operators and support their expansion plans. Um, our intention with, with this webinar was to try and, and convince you that it makes sense for, for a financial institution to take part in this program and that it opens an interesting business perspective. Uh, we hope we've managed to achieve this goal. Uh, maybe we will have a better idea when we see the results of the polls. Um, I'm trying to, to see where we are on the voting. On the voting, I see very positive results. I hope this is uh, this is uh, the sign that uh, that this uh, presentation was at least uh, successful in that regard. I see that a, a large majority of the participants uh, seem to have an interest in participating in the second phase, and that all of those who have voted. Uh, would would be would be keen to continue these discussions with uh, with Proparco. Um, so what we will do is that um, uh, Magali and her team at our at our Bangkok office will be reaching out directly to each of you um, to have your feedback on what on what you heard today and to explore uh, your interest in taking part in this uh, in continuing these discussions and ultimately uh, taking part in this uh, in this second phase of the program. Um, I would like to thank all of those who have contributed to these presentations, uh, who have made made this uh, this seminar possible. Also, those who have worked behind the scenes to 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 make this work, which from from at least from a technological perspective, despite a few glitches, seems to have worked. And I hope from from the perspective of the contents of this uh, webinar, uh, I think I think we've we've addressed a large number of points, and 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 I hope this has been useful. Um, I would like to extend special thanks to Mr. Ditt, uh, whose, whose institution, uh, FTB, has been instrumental in, in the success of the first phase of the program and who has been kind enough to share his experience with us. And I hope this has given uh, the participants a, uh, some, a better idea of what uh, this program looks like from the perspective of, uh, of a partner bank. And um, I see there's a... No, this, this is just housekeeping messages. Um, and, and, and so I, I, I will just conclude by thanking all of you uh, for your participation. Uh, you will be uh, receiving uh, links to uh, download the, the, um, the recording of this, uh, of this webinar or the presentations we've showed um, if, if, you, if you need to do so. Um, so if, if there is nothing else to add, I would like to, to once again thank all of you and, and hope that we will be speaking soon again uh, of, of the specifics of your, of your potential participation in, in this program. So thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.